Well, hello, everyone. Welcome again back to section two of the Young Family Long Form. We are in our second session and we are still working on that first move, which is quite the move. It has multiple techniques. It's called Embrace Tiger, Return to Mountain. Last week we did the Embrace Tiger part of it. And we're gonna do review that today and also go into the Return to Mountain part of it, which is a lot like Rest the Bird's Tale. So before we begin, does anybody have any questions? All right, as Nancy says, I'll take that as a no. <laughs> what we will do, uh, if you have questions about anything we do today, including the first section, just, just let me know. And um, there's always time for that. And when it's fresh in your mind, that's the moment for it. So um, what we'll do is we'll start with the first section. We'll do the whole thing. We'll do it at a fair pace. I'll just be calling the moves. And then we'll go into Embrace Tiger. Uh, they Embrace part, Tiger part of Embrace Tiger Return to Mountain. And then um, what I'd like to do after that is follow it up going in another direction with us uh, doing from parry block and punch through those moves. That way everybody will be able to kind of look over their shoulder and check those out. And if you have questions about parry block and punch or any of the moves after that, we can also work that into today's class. So just let me know if you have any of those. So let's get started. Get ourselves and prepare. We're gonna be thinking today a lot about our alignment and our body position. So the, one of the best things you can do is feel very grounded. Remember like you're almost sitting in a chair, yet your sort of body suspended from the neck and your head it's really the most important thing. The top of your head is just gently, gently reaching up. So we're not gonna look at our feet maybe today, eh, except for maybe section two, we'll see. All right, this is prepare. Are you still knee soft, about ready to sit in that chair? Think about that. Just about to sit on that bar stool. Ah, there you go. Opening. Left word off. Right word off. Roll back. Press. Push. Single whip. Raise hands and step forward. White crane spreads its wings. Left brush knee and push. Hand strums the loop. Left brush knee and push. Right brush knee and push. Left brush knee and push. Hand strums the loop. One final left brush knee and push. It's 
step up, parry, block, and punch. A parent closing up. Cross hands. Embrace tiger without the return to mountain. All right. Anyone have a question from that part right away? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Let us imagine we have just finished a final left brush knee and push. All right, so yeah, great. So it's probably gonna work best for you because what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the different parts of these moves just to help help us out to really solidify them. Because these are the last moves we did. We haven't practiced them as much, right? Okay, this is parry, block, and punch. Shifting back, left arm rises. Arms coming to center as the left foot goes out. Now, your arm is going to, both arms circle down, halfway down, right hand makes the fist. You're going to step through one line, two sides, and your fist is pointing towards your middle arm, forearm, and your back arm is pushing out. Moving our weight forward to stand on that front foot. All our weight is there. Check out this position. See, my back foot is. Uh, coming up, but still touching. Now, that head we talked about, keep your balance. Turn, step out for a bow step. You're blocking somebody with your left hand. Look what's at your right sort of hip, right where your leg joins your pelvis. And come through, turn your torso. Punch. A parent closing up. Little turn to the left. Left hand separates a little bit and flattens. Both arms rotate, palm up and they cross. Look where this arm is, underneath your upper arm. Not only that, at the end of this, you open your right hand. Let's shift our weight back. When we do, windshield wiper with your left arm. That's a standing word off so that we can wipe somebody literally off our arm. Fingers pointed towards towards the uh, middle forearm, right? We're gonna rotate both our arms and our upper body so it's square into a push position. Oh my gosh, you're, uh, you've got a good body position, but it's very compressed. So what are we gonna do? Expand out up the diagonal in push. Now you're gonna turn away from me I'm sure you can do it, listen to my call. We're gonna start to shift to center and as we do for cross hands, gonna make that diamond and then paint a rainbow, chop. Shifting over, arms dropping, bring your feet in parallel and coming up into cross hands. Looking great. 
folks. Okay, now this is our new move. Don't worry, I'm gonna, you're gonna be able to see it over your shoulder in just a second. We're gonna shift your weight to the right. As you do, you're gonna give it to the right on that left foot. Then lift your right heel, shift back, arms separate arms separate, remember that, uh, that we'll go back into that again, and then swing that left arm, right arm comes over, just like a brush knee, and your foot steps around somebody. Polish the table and strike. You probably ended up inside the corner. Left foot, not quite towards nine o'clock and your right foot, not quite towards uh, whatever that is, 10.30. It's 10 or it might even be 9.30. All right, how was that for folks? Yeah? Okay, do you have any questions about any of those moves or is there any one you wanna redo besides the one we just did last week? We good? All right. Sounds good. You folks are really quiet. <laughs> so feel feel free. Feel free. It's it's great. All right. So we're going to review last week and go on to the rest of it. So let us uh, do that final move a couple of more times, just sketching it and then I calling it. And then, um, and we'll do it in several directions, okay? So let's start actually from here. It's not the direction we usually go, but you'll be able to see a lot if we do it this way. From here, we're gonna shift to the right. Pivot on that left foot, our weight's still on the right. Shifting back, arms separate, right arm comes over, pushes down like, remember that piston? Swing, step. Polish the table, use your left hand at your shoulder and bend knee, turn your torso. And let's do it from this position. Shifting to the right, turning to the right. All our weight back. Step around somebody and polish the table and strike. All right, well, everyone, it seems to be ending up in the right position. Um, I'm gonna go through the footwork and then the arms a little bit, but I want to know if there are any questions about either of those so I can really target what it is you're interested in. Susie. Can I just ask, uh, when you are doing the polish the table, and this obviously comes up in first section as well, on the left and the right brush knees, um, uh, you know when you say polish the table, do you bring your hand direct in a straight line and then down or does it come slightly down and then down <laughs> so 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 this is you see how i'm going to do it this way right I, I, yeah for, so here here do you see it, it is coming it is it, it is, is a, it it's is a arcing down, bend, but not a lot. Okay, yeah. and then it comes in. Push. So from mm -hmm. here, do you see? Yeah. And that's, then that's here, perfect. it's just right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. But the, the, one of the important things about all of these moves is to make it big, especially the brush knees. It took me a long time to get there. 
and it'll be really uh you should you should so when you're doing these moves you don't need to be like this you see the difference between this and this mm -hmm. so it's a swing it's sort of a natural swing arching mm -hmm. arcing down right yeah and and it's it's power because you want it to to end up yeah so it is not here and here sometimes folks teach it as um as it's this and it's this and this but actually your whole body is moving so it doesn't have to be separated so you folks are all at the point now where you don't have to go over and down um, yes so basically you, you start with that for the for teaching um purposes and then but, once people get used to that then you tweak it slightly right to a body. when when you're just teaching the arms yes yeah yeah exactly exactly good thank question you. thank you thank you all right so uh footwork right let's just go over it to make sure that everybody's got this footwork. I think it's easiest seen actually from, well, we'll do it in a couple directions, right? So we're gonna shift our weight to the right. And as we do, we're gonna have our, uh, become conscious of our heel on our left foot. Then there's a little weight still left there and we're gonna turn. We want to turn in a way that we can still keep the back foot wholly on the ground, but there's not much weight on it yet. Then bend that back knee more, whatever is your accustomed bending, and release the heel on the front foot. Then there's somebody who was behind you, they're standing like this. So you really want to bring this right foot to neutral. So you're gonna let go of it and let it come to neutral and then think of swinging it out to get around at least one of their legs, right? Or between their legs. And you're gonna go out for a bow step. So this helps you to get out enough. Now that bow step is a bow step sort of off to the corner, but you didn't, as you see here, I didn't quite get to straight with my left foot. And so the corner would be here, but I'm kind of here. Heel, ball, toe, bare knee. Well, let's see how I did. If I rotate, I mean, if I pivot in my left foot and then bring back my right foot, pretty close to shoulder width apart there. So just off in another direction. So this is where you should be. So we're gonna do it from this one more time. Let's just practice it and then we'll do it in the other direction. Shifting right, pivoting, turning. Shifting back, releasing that right foot, bring it to neutral and around out towards the sort of towards the corner, but feel a bow step. Heel, ball, toe, bend knee. Then you can check that, pivot your back foot. You can do it either, either way. You wanna get railroad tracks going. So I was pivoting it a little much. And then you can either bring your front foot back like this, like I did before, or you can stand on your front foot and bring it forward. I find it harder not to cheat when I do that. And then you just see if it feels like your shoulder width apart. Is it too wide or is it fine? And put your arms out. That's the direction you're going, right? It's not really to the corner. You're used to the fact that you think of this 45 degrees, but we're not at 45 degrees. How's the footwork? Footwork is good? Okay. Yeah, Erlin. 
Okay, so I'm finding that in order to get a shoulder width apart bow step, I am really having to put my foot pretty far out there because every time I check, I'm like, you could call it shoulder width maybe, but it's really a little narrow. So this seems to be a really wide kind of step out. Uh, so here's the thing. This is a common perception. I have it too. When in doubt, wider, right? Okay, but let me let me give you a tip. When I do this, I'm going to, stepping out from this point, I am going to, because it's to the corner, I'm going to think it's not relative to the corner. I'm going to think it's sort of relative to this way. I'm not going to think of my left foot as at 45 degrees like it normally is. So it feels like it gets really, really wide here, right? Really, really wide. But if this foot, I don't know how to explain it. If the foot, if your foot's at 45 degrees, you're used to stepping like this, right? Now, if we turn ourselves, but we keep thinking this way instead of this way, it will really feel like it's like it's not far enough forward and it's way wide and your head can get caught in that so so yes it may be that you're going to think of it going wider and then that may be an explanation that doesn't work for everybody so take it or leave it so what yeah what you just said so um, that makes sense because if I imagine my back foot actually pointing in the same direction as the foot that's reaching out, then I can think about how far shoulder width really is so that I land my heel in the right place so that I know that they will be shoulder width apart if I was to check it. Right. So if the back heel, if the back foot is at 45 degrees, the shoulder width is distance between your heels, right? But you've got to keep that 45 degrees. So you got to think, okay, the 45 degrees is off this way. And so my railroad track is off this way. So I'm stepping this way. And if you sit and look at it against this wall, as an example, it just looks really, really wide. The other key thing you said, Erlin, is the other thing I was going to mention. It's all about your heel. When your feet aren't far enough apart, it may be, not always, but it may be that you're, you put like your whole foot down. Think about putting, you know how we go heel ball toe? Think about placing your heel in the right position and then placing your toe in the direction you need to go in. And um, oftentimes, if your heel had just, if your angle of your foot had just been a tiny bit different, you would have done a good bow step. If it had been- Can I add something, Dee Dee? Like this, yes, Can please Can I just do. add something? I think um, when you, so from here, you bring your left foot just past 45 degrees. So if you step, if you, when you step around, Yes. You will naturally go slightly wider. And maybe she's, sorry, I forgot the lady's name, but maybe she's not actually going around the back of the foot. If you do that, then it will make you slightly wider with that right foot so you come back into it, a parallel stance. It, it it does help me that way. That's how I got it. Shelly. Well, I, I, for me, it's not a matter of reminding myself that I'm not going so far forward as I'm going wide. In mm -hmm. other words, my heel is kind of parallel. Um, I don't know if the word parallel is right, but not much farther than where my toe is on my other foot. In other words, I'm indeed, indeed, not forward. Just to say, this is a bow step. Okay, it does, it's a bow step. This is a bow step, but it's a bow step to the corner. Now I'm gonna to try to keep my hips where they are and, and show you how. And, and it's not, it, if I look this way, doesn't it look wide? And doesn't it look like 
like my back heel is only maybe halfway against that foot. Yeah, yeah, to the corner, that's the way it looks. But watch this. That's the same bow step. Yep, yep. So it's wide, <laughs> not forward. So, 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 well, it is forward because <laughs> if, if we're doing the technique, right, this is our forward. If we're doing the technique to the corner, this is our forward. Right, and but it's this, significantly for, I mean, it, it, I think it's a matter of your step is wider than it is forward. Only if, by the, uh, depends on your frame of reference. Yeah, perhaps, yeah. Depends, depends on your frame of reference. It is going to be my, your bow step. So here, you see how, you see how long that bow step is? See how long it is? Now, let's see, how can I turn it so that, so that, uh, okay, I'm gonna turn it to the corner now. Okay, now it doesn't look so long, right? To you. It is the same bow step. <laughs> Honest. Okay, do it again. There we go. <laughs> it's the same bow step. <laughs> I'm just picking up and turning. So, so your mind will have a frame of reference and it won't necessarily change. This is why part of what we're doing is we're training ourselves to just step out to that natural bow step. And at some point, doing it outside will help you because you will get yourself uh, and not always watching your feet will help you. And you just say, I'm stepping out for a bow step. And then periodically you check them. Erlin, how is your question doing? Okay, well, there's something I've noticed as well in, uh, with the width and being correct is that if your back foot is at the corner, then you're going to be, you're going to have an error because, okay, we know that this isn't a corner bow step. It's not. It's just about corner. So if you're checking, if you're checking a bow step where your foot is back foot is not pointing in the right direction, it's going to naturally make it narrower because you check your bow step by rotating on your back heel and bringing your feet together. It, I can't explain it. It, um, it's it's I, it's you gonna yes, have but a, you bring them on the railroad tracks determined by your front foot. Yes, and if right when you're step when I'm stepping out. I have a tendency to want to step towards the corner with my toes, right? My heel might be placed correctly, but if I don't put my toes down, not to the corner, then I'm going to have an error. But my, but my natural tendency. Oh, oh my, no, 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 you're not. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to show you from here. Show you from here. Okay. So we're going to shift to the right and turn, but. I want you to take a look because you can't see this right now. I didn't make it all the way to straight. Okay. Now, when I step out for my, for my bow step, I'm not going to make it all the way to the corner. The corner would be here or the corner would be here, I guess, I guess whatever. The corner would be here, but I'm not going to make it all the, my toes are not going to go all the way to the corner. I'm just going to make a good bow step that is aligned. If you put your toes all the way to the corner, your bow step will always be too narrow. Right. Thank you. Okay. Stick. Can you stay there a second? Oh. 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 Yes. Yes. Can you stand, no stand facing the way you were at the end there for a second. Yes. In your I can. final bow step. So yeah. So when I. So if you if you check that step, it'll be wide. But if you point your toe to the corner and then you have the back toe parallel, then it'll be too narrow. That's exactly what I was talking about. Yes. That's yes. Okay. So when people sometimes make a shortcut and they say it's to the corner, it will be inside the corner. Even even Master Yang does it inside to the corner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because because it's it's like. You would really lose your balance if you brought this foot all the way here. It would be very, uh, you wouldn't be able to keep your butt down. You'd be like doing this, right? 
you would it'd be it'd be and and then you then you'd go to like how do you get this foot past right <laughs> to step around it'd be quite awkward so 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 we can only get this foot but so far even if we're very limber and some of us probably can get it just past the 45 degree excellent discussion everybody thank you <laughs> this is the kind of thing remember this is part of the curriculum for us all right i'm going to go on because uh because we want to make sure we get through everything and i just want to review for you and actually uh invite you to um let's see let's try it let's try it uh so sort of let's try it this way so I just want you right now to imagine what is happening. So you can, you can, if you want to stand, you don't have to actually think of the other feet uh, at this, I mean, what the feet are doing and the body is doing. What I want you to do is, I, I think I told you not to move this elbow. And when I watch Master Yang, he doesn't move that elbow much. I was thinking you might want to move it up. But you could, one thing you could do is you could let it come down just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit, because that's natural, right? Just, just see how that comes down just a little bit. Okay, so it comes down, that elbow comes down a little bit, that starts to give you room. The other thing you do is you open this up a little bit. And remember what I told you, you go from this kind of a position that you had before, this kind of curve that you had before, you, oh, you know, you, you open up and you go to this kind of curve. Remember that? Because this is your PowerPoint now. So it looks like this. So we come around, we can just do it this way, <laughs> this way, beside each other. So, that elbow's gonna maybe drop half an inch and you open and it's sort of palm up-ish. And by now it's pretty straight, but as you start to come around, you see there's a little circle here. We did this before and you've, you've got room now to start this arm down, right? It's gonna come over, right? Still good body position. Just a normal swing of that left hand. So let's do that again. From here, what happens? That elbow either stays where it is or it drops like a half an inch. And as it does, you start to open up this arm and it comes, comes like this. Okay, remember we kind of talked like you might feel this relationship between pushing down here and here, right? Keep them together. All right, now let's talk about the coordinations here for sure. So we're gonna do it both ways. I'm gonna just do it this way. We're gonna, uh, in two directions here. So we're gonna shift here to the right. Arms don't move, that's step one. The other thing that happens as you're shifting is you're turning. So let's do that. Step one, shift, turn. That pivot on that left heel. Now, your weight comes back. What happens then? The right arm opens up, the left arm starting to come down. When your weight is fully back, that's the moment that the right arm comes over. You step around, swing, touch, swing, touch. This left hand ends when the right heel is down. Your gaze over the fingertips of your left hand. Now your gaze switches direction as your right arm moves. Heel 
ball, toe, and bend knee. All right, so on a count, one, two, you're moving back, bend that back leg and your arms separate, three, your right arm comes over, swing step, polish the tables, number four and five, you're turning your torso and bending that front knee. Let's do it from here. One, shift to the right, pivot to the right, turn. Two, arms separate as you go back and they start to come over in three, swing, step. Four, polish the table and strike. How are we feeling about that? Good? All right. Like that. Fabulous. All right. Shall we go on? All right, so here's the deal. <laughs> We're only gonna, we're gonna do part of grasp the bird's tail, but we're gonna be starting from the wrong position. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna show it to you first, okay? So you'll be seeing some differences, okay? So here we're doing this move. This is what we've already done, right? Now we're gonna do roll back from here. We'll go into that in a minute. It's kind of a truncated roll back, but it's roll back. And then we're gonna do press and push. And when we do it, we've got a new forward position it's like as our new railroad tracks are. So it's not, it's not to the corner and it's not to straight. So one more time, and then we're gonna go through what, what the heck's going on with that rollback. Here's embrace the tiger. Return to mountain, here comes, getting into position. Now I can do roll back, but there's some big differences with this roll back. So just to make it easy, er, and to give you some really hard practice, ha ha ha. I'm gonna invite you, this is my right arm, so things are gonna be different. <laughs> But I'm gonna invite you to see if you can, well, let's do it this way first, maybe, I guess. All right, so let's, let's see if we can do it this way. I don't wanna make it too hard for you. So we've just, oh, it's so right brush knee. We've just finished right brush knee, okay? So what we're gonna do is I want you to, to think about this with your right arm. Nice, up and out. Up, sort of to where you could do this, right? Up and out, only it runs together. Up and out, up and out, up and out. You notice that my hand is like a push hand. I want you to see it from here. This is what this move looks like from here. Different. A real rollback, number one. I haven't turned yet. Look how far my weight is back. This is a big difference.
my weight is actually largely back before I turn, which is different. So we're gonna practice both of these, but how, how do we do these moves? So I'm actually gonna ask you to do a right brush knee and don't mirror me and straight to the camera, okay? So you want your right hand, uh, let's see, so, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, your right hand at your side. Nice. So Vigi's got it. Your right hand at your side. I know I put the wrong one up. So your right hand at your side. Right hand at your side. I know you're not mirroring me. You're not mirroring me. Okay. We could, most of us have got it. We got it. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know this is, this is confusing. We're going to come up with that right hand and out. I just want you to see that and sort of try. Nice sketching, folks. Those of you who've never seen this before, that is hard. Try it again. We're going to come up, turn that left hand, and come back before we turn. Now that you have, I'm going to show you a little from, from here, we show it from the two sides, right? So this will be easier. So you're gonna start back. This right hand's gonna come up and the left hand is pivoting. Do you see that? Left hand pivots and you're gonna get into this position as you've come back eventually. But for right now, let's just get the move. Here, here. Here, here. Okay, right hand comes up, left hand rotates, one in, one out. Right hand up, left hand's rotating, one in, one out. Where does it end up? Oh my gosh, it's almost always that way, isn't it? One hand's looking like this, one arm, the other arm is pointing towards the middle forearm, right? Let's look at it from here. I don't know how much you can see. Here, okay, it comes up. And out. Oh, you can't see it. Yeah, we gotta do it this way. Up. Out. One more time. Up. Out. Now, what's wild about this, you're gonna be in a bow step, so get yourself in a bow step, right? Right leg is bent, back leg is pretty straight. You have just, you should feel like you're shoulder width apart, right? Now, you're actually, you're actually gonna push on your front foot as you start to bring this right arm up, up, you're rotating and as you go, you're about center right here. And as you go forward back, you are turning your upper body, but you haven't really swung yet. Do you, do you see how my body turned, but it hasn't swung? Okay, so let's do that, just that part. Coming up, going out, and as it does, in order to get in the right position that feels right, I have to turn my upper body a little bit, right? But I haven't really turned it all the way. Right, right. Now, when you get it turned all the way, I want you to tell me if you've still got a good deal of, of like 30% of your weight on your front foot. So let's do it again. Circle, rotate, forward, back, 
and your weight is back and then to the side. Swing. Can you do that swing and still keep 30% on your front foot? There's a trick here. Look here for a second. Let's see, is this right? Look here for a second. See that front foot? Look at, you want your shoulder in line, thinking about going towards that front foot. If you don't, <laughs> aim your shoulder at the front foot. If you aim it somewhere else, you probably, you I mean, you can turn as far as you can turn, but you see my shoulder? See my shoulder? Let's look at it this way too. That shoulder, you can't quite see it here, but that shoulder and look at, look at my tip. You know how when we're in a bow step, we're tipped, we're turned, but we're tipped. This is true of both both rollbacks, okay? So we're gonna do the new rollback, but then we're gonna do the old rollback, then we're gonna do the new rollback, then we're gonna do the old rollback. They start at different positions, okay? So you're ready to think about that front foot. And so here we go, just from here, left hand forward, right hand here. Right? So, gonna be circling, right? As you come back, slowly coming back. By the time you get here, you're just about back. Then swing. But as you swing, make sure your shoulder is still, it's not up, it's still down, is pointed towards the front. Do you have weight in your front foot? You have, you folks look great. Okay, just, just for fun now, do press. Nice. And do push. Now give me a right word off arm. We're going to do the regular, the regular, um, uh, roll back so we can note the differences. So what happens in regular roll back, we go all the way over here. Remember that? And our left arm rotates and points and gets into this position. Look how far we get to turn. And then we swing and go back at the same time. I realize you're looking over your shoulder now, which is, is kind of hard, right? But the shoulder still points towards your toes to the front, the front direction. And press. And push. Now, let's do it from here. This is where we are, right? I'll get a little closer to you. Right arm down, left hand pushing, I mean, left hand striking, right? In a bow step. Right arm is gonna just sort of a little tiny circle up, right? As we start to move back and the left hand is turning, right? One forward, one back. And then we turn from here again, circle, forward, back. Our weight is now fully back and turn, swing, swing. All right, let's add them together. We'll be doing more of this next week.
Let's add them together from here. Embrace tiger, return to mountain. Shifting to the right. Turning. Shifting back, arms circle. Stepping around and out. Polish the table and strike. What's going to happen? Our right arm up and out. Our weight is back. Turn. Shoulder towards that front foot, little tip. And press. Everything is in line with that front foot. Your right elbow should now be over your right knee. Open up, come back for push. Let's do it again. From cross hands. Shift to the right, pivot, 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 pivot. Shift back, release that front foot, arms are circling. Don't lose your balance like I just did. Swing, step, polish the table and strike. Right arm is gonna come up towards your shoulder. It's kind of like a circle. Make sure your elbow doesn't come back. It kind of goes out. Here we go. Left hand rotates and one up, one back. You're coming back all the time. Is there still weight on your front right foot? Should be. And swing. Keep that weight on your front right foot. And press. Push. Questions? No questions? Ah, okay. <laughs> Let's do it some more. And embrace tiger, return to mountains, shifting, turning, shifting back, arm circle. Brush knee and push. Roll back, shifting back. Arms circling, one out, one in. Turn. Press. Is your elbow over your right knee? Right elbow over right knee. Congratulations. Opening for push. Back. forward. If your push doesn't feel right, it is a sign that your bow step probably isn't right, right? <laughs> so don't worry. I've been there. We've all been there. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. We still have a little time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that place that we were at at the start of Perry Block and Punch. I'm gonna call it, and maybe if there's time, we'll do it twice, all right? And we're gonna do it from this other direction, okay? And do it from this other direction. So we've just done a left brush knee. Step up, Perry Block and Punch, arms, coming just like the beginning of all those brush knees. Arms circle down, 
make that fist halfway, stepping through one line, two sides. You're going to connect and block, step for a bow step and punch. Apparent closing up. Little turn to the left, you're giving way. Your arms then rotate and cross. You open your right hand, shifting back, wiping them off, turning, pushing forward. Cross hands, you're going away from me now. Don't try to look, you won't have to. You're chopping, beautiful. Chop to the corner and come back in parallel. Get your arms well done, you folks. And shift to the right. Pivot on that left foot to the right. All your weight on that back foot. Bend that knee and circle your arms. Swing, step. Polish the table and strike. Here we are. Roll back, shifting back, circling our arms, one out, one in, and turn, press, push, Okay, we have time to do it one more time. <laughs> Let's do it. Left bow step. You've just swung your right hand and it's in a strike. Parry block and punch. Not gonna call it, you're just gonna do it. A parent closing up. Next move, you're turning away. Cross hands. Nice. And brace tiger return to mountain. Shift to the right. Turn. Circle your arms. Polish that table and strike. Roll back. Arms circle, one out, one in as you come back and swing. Press. Push. Any final questions? This is a really hard move, folks. Did a great job. Wow, I am just continue to be really impressed. So thanks for it. We'll, we'll have next week to continue to review. So bring your questions from your practice and then we'll be doing fist under elbow next week. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's another really big move that combines things you already know with things you don't. So let's close class. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much, Katie. That was great class.